Now, was this something you just grew into, or were, did you, were you taught this? Because right? I was once told about hockey players. The reason that hockey players aren't you know, overly boisterous off the ice, and they're not loud and obnoxious like some of these other athletes we see, is because once you get on the ice, there's a chance you're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Right? So yeah. where did you learn this, uh, I guess, persona that well, you had with skates on? I re it's, there's a funny story. Like When people ask me, the first time that I ever really got myself in, into trouble, I think was first or second grade. And my mom got a call from the, from the school and said, you better come down. And she assumed that I had done something, which was correct. And there was a kid in my class that was deaf. And for some reason, I didn't believe that he was deaf. And... That was in first grade, you were You know, I wanted, to, I wanted to test it out. And it was a terrible thing, thinking back, and, and, but that was always something that I never waited for somebody to tell me the rules. I always thought there's a way to kind of come in through the back door, and I was always really open-minded and wanted to explore things, and I never waited for somebody to say, all right, you're allowed to do this, or I just went for it, and I think that was always how I was in my career, and as I got older and, and started to understand how to hit buttons with certain individuals and use that as an advantage in sport, I think I became pretty good at it. Yeah, no, yeah, you definitely did. You were beloved in New York. Uh, maybe not in other places, but you were beloved in New yeah, York. Definitely not now, in your, other places. Your, your, your path wasn't easy. You were undrafted. You signed with the Detroit Red, Red Wings in that first season. They won the cup, but you didn't play enough games yep. to actually get your name on the cup. So it wasn't, it wasn't like you just stepped into stardom in, in, in the NHL. Yeah. Tell us about your journey and how you came to be known as an enforcer for a guy I look at, I'm like, you're bigger than me. I yeah. mean, I, I yeah, can be yeah. an enforcer in the NHL. Yeah. I mean, tell us about a little bit about that journey, especially the early part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I played junior in Canada, and I was always one of the better players in, in that league, certainly at that time. There was a, a, a thing with me which was everyone perceived, because I was sort of this animal on the ice, and I would cross the line and say things that, uh, really kind of set the other team off uh, as much as I possibly could. The outside perceived that, that I was a bad person, that I was this, like, lunatic off the ice, and I must be we'll a, get to the party a, a, a bad teammate. <laughs> and that hurt me moving forward, and certainly I didn't get drafted because of that, and the other element, I think, was my size. And... I got the opportunity to go to a training camp, my first NHL training camp, and my mentality going into it was, I've, I've got nothing to lose, one, and I better do something to make sure that management sees that I, I can play and that I can do something in this league. And I went to training camp, I left with an NHL contract, I went back, played my last year junior, um, never changed my mentality. I never really wavered, even when I had that uh, cachet of having an NHL contract and having to obviously represent them and there were different rules attached. I never really switched my demeanor or my behavior. I always was focused on being the center of attention on the ice. Uh, sometimes I crossed over off of the ice, which, you know, I'd take some of those things back, but it was always something I was focused on and it differentiated me from really hundreds of guys that were as skilled and worked as hard, but you, you know, what's yeah. the thing that gets you to that next level?